you today how to make this oh so delicious gluten-free carrot cake. That will not only outshine its glutinous cousin, but will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. There are many things you can do with carrots during lockdown. You can start playing carrot jenga. Or make a carrot cake. I never knew what a carrot cake is growing up in Germany. I grew up in the prehistoric time where we didn't have cell phones, internet and social media. I think it is now where we're in the fiber optic internet period of Earth that everybody knows what a carrot cake is. I did fall in love with carrot cake when I was living in New York and certainly had to come up with my own recipe. Just after I ate thousands of carrot cakes and compared 150 recipes and it is a very good recipe. You're using it on your own risk. Matt and I have brought this carrot cake to our offices and suddenly everybody storms to the cafeteria and we have started timing how fast the carrot cake gets inhaled. Let's get started on this recipe. I need for this recipe 400 grams or three and two thirds of a cup of grated carrots. Unfortunately, I forgot to buy them in the supermarket grated, so I'm gonna quick peel them and shred them in my food processor. And I'm gonna add 60 milliliter or four tablespoons of fresh lemon juice to the carrots and mix the lemon and the carrots. I'm gonna let the lemon juice soak into the carrots and in the meantime, start working on mixing the flowers. Let's measure the flour combo for the carrot cake. You want to measure 100 grams, which is two third cup of sorghum flour, 40 gram or a quarter cup of sweet rice flour, 40 gram of a quarter cup of white rice flour, 40 gram, which is a quarter cup of potato starch, and 40 gram, which is one third cup of tapioca starch. To the flour, we're gonna add half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of ground gloves, two tablespoons of cinnamon. As rising agent, we're using two teaspoons of baking soda, which is also called bread soda, and two teaspoons of baking powder. I'm gonna put aside for now the dry measured ingredients. I'm gonna get started in making the batter for the carrot cake. For that, I'm gonna measure 200 grams, which is about one cup of dark brown sugar, which will add a very nice caramelized flavor to the cake. Now we're gonna add 200 grams or one cup of white sugar. I'm also adding 300 grams of oil, and I normally use either sunflower or rapeseed oil because it has no flavor. Last but not least, I'm going to add four medium-sized eggs at room temperature to the mixture. With a cheap mixer, I'm going to quick blend all the ingredients together. You can also do it with a whisk in case you don't have a mixer available. For added flavor, I'm adding two tablespoons of vanilla extract. And yes, that's surprisingly a lot of vanilla extract in a batter. Now I'm adding all the dry ingredients, in other words, the flour and the spices, to the batter. To give the cake a little bit more crunch, I want to add 125 grams or 4.5 ounces of crushed pecans or walnuts. Now, you can certainly buy them crushed, but in case you don't have them handy, measure 125 grams of whole nuts, add them to a plastic bag and crush them with your rolling pin. Add the crushed nuts to the batter. Now I'm adding the 400 grams of carrots to the batter as well. I'm going to try to avoid adding the lemon juice which is collected at the bottom of the carrot bowl to avoid making the cake too soggy. With the spatula, I'm gonna steer and blend all the ingredients together. I'm gonna prep my baking pan and add the paper liner. I'm ready to pour my cake into an eight inch cake pan, which is about 20 centimeter. That will make a pretty tall cake. We're talking about like almost 3.5 inches tall, which is about seven centimeters. So if you want a cake which is not quite as tall, you may wanna use a nine or a 10 inch cake pan instead and the baking time will be also much less. To have a tasty carrot cake you don't need to make three layered carrot cakes so I want to show you some simple ways and for that I'm going to make some carrot cake in a baking pan and this one is 13 by 9 inches. I'm going to line the baking pan with some parchment paper and with the scissor I'm going to cut a few slits to make sure I can easily fold the paper. I also use just half the recipe for the baking pan. 
I'm going to put a batter into the baking pan and put both cakes into the oven. I am baking now both carrot cakes. Uh, the temperature will be 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 175 degrees Celsius. The cake round I will be baking for 45 to 60 minutes, while the baking sheet will be 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Certainly you want to check if the cake is done before you take it out. You can use the same method as with all the other cakes. Um, put a chopstick in and pull it out and see if any batter remains on it. So my cake was overflowing in the cake pan, what is probably because I let it sit a little bit too long outside, like 20-30 minutes before I put it in the oven and all the baking soda and baking powder started to re react already. But no harm done, so I'm going to release the cake with my cake spatula and flip the cake onto my cooling rack. By placing the cooling rack on the top of the cake pan and then grab the cake pan and flip it literally upside down. And then I can pull the cake pan off the cake. Lifting the carrot cake out of the baking pan should be much easier. Just firmly grip the parchment paper and lift it onto the cooling rack. I'm gonna put both cakes aside and let them cool down. In the meantime, I'm gonna prepare the candied carrots for the decoration of the carrot cake. With the potato peeler, I'm gonna cut very thin carrot stripes and place them in a pot. I'm gonna add 100 grams or a quarter cup of sugar to the pot and 120 milliliter, which is about half a cup of water. I'm gonna heat up the water and the sugar, which is a simple syrup, and the carrots, and let it come to a simple boil. I let the carrot boil for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna fish the carrots out of the boiling simple syrup with my chopsticks, but you can use tongs, forks, anything you can find to fish them out. And place them on a baking sheet, which is lined with parchment paper. You wanna separate the carrot straps as much as possible. The carrots go back into the oven now for like 30 minutes at 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius to dry out. I have to work very fast when the carrot stripes come out of the oven because they will dry out and become rigid within 10-20 minutes. I'm going to take my chopstick and roll the carrot stripes around them to make carrot curls or I keep them straight and just let them dry for my cake decoration. While my carrots are drying, I'm going to start working on my frosting. I'm going to add one stick of butter or 113 gram of butter at room temperature into a bowl. I add 225 grams or 8 ounces of cream cheese at room temperature. Now, I do prefer to use Philadelphia because they added enough chemicals to it that it's a much stiffer cream cheese than, than many generic brands and that helps with making a much stiffer frosting and keeps holding the shape better. While I'm blending the cream cheese and the butter, I'm going to add 600 grams or 3 cups of powdered sugar or icing sugar. I keep on blending until the icing is well combined. What can happen if the cream cheese and the butter are not at room temperature and are a bit too cold that you will have butter clumps in your icing. What you got to do then is you put it in a microwave just for a few seconds to melt the butter. Now the icing will be very liquid and you're probably going to freak out. Just put it back into the fridge and the icing and the butter will harden again and your icing will be fine. I'm also adding two teaspoons of vanilla extract to the icing just to give it a little bit of a vanilla hint and mix the icing one more time. Assuming my cake is now cold and my icing is solid again, I'm going to make now the first carrot cake version. I'm going to take half of the carrot sheet cake and just put frosting on it. And with a cake spatula, I can try to create some patterns on the top of it to make it look pretty. But if I want to impress someone and make it look a little bit fancier, what I can do is I take a biscuit cutter and cut out carrot cake rounds and treat it like a cupcake and add some frosting on the top, add another carrot cake round and pipe one more layer of frosting on it. Or you serve it as a single cake round. I mean, all of them are pretty and very delicious. But for those moments where I really have to show off my baking chops, I'm gonna make the three layered carrot cake. I'm gonna spread a little bit of cream cheese frosting on the top of my cake bottom to make sure my cake doesn't slide around. I can't forget to remove the cake liner because this is like surgery, right? You don't wanna find a random scalp in your tummy after getting your appendix removed. And with a very long and sharp chef's knife, I want to separate the cake into three different layers and put two layers aside. 
I'm gonna spread about one quarter inch or one centimeter of cream cheese onto the first layer. I'm gonna place now the second carrot cake layer on the top of the cream cheese frosting. I'm gonna add now another quarter inch or one centimeter of cream cheese frosting. And now I'm gonna add the third cake layer on the top of the cream cheese frosting. Okay, I was a little bit impatient. I didn't wait until the cake is completely cooled down and the cream cheese frosting is stiff enough. So I have a little bit of a wobbly cake situation going on, but I can all correct that. So right now I'm just gonna do the crumb layer. What that means is I'm gonna cover the cake completely with cream cheese frosting and just make sure that all the crumbs stay inside the cake. The cake doesn't look pretty yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna put the cake either into the fridge for like one or two hours or into the freezer for 10 20 minutes so the butter in the frosting hardens up now i'm going to take my cake out of the fridge or the freezer and put it back onto the turntable and with a spatula or cake spatula add cream cheese frosting to the edges and the top of the cake and start smoothing out the edges if i still have a leaning cake situation going on at this time it's the right moment to push some of the layers back that are nicely aligned again to get this very smooth looking cake, I'm gonna add some frosting and then again remove it and even it out with the cake spatula. When the cake is almost even, I'm gonna use a cake scraper at the edges of the cake to make sure it's a nice clean edge. With the cake spatula, I'm gonna make sure I even out the top of the cake and may even create some patterns to make it look nice and pretty. As final touch, I'm gonna lay out the candied carrots on the top of it just to make it look a little bit prettier. And I'm gonna add for my smaller cakes a candied carrot curl on the top of the frosting. I put in the video description the ingredients, the amount of the ingredients, and where you can buy the gluten-free flours. And if you like the video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications for the upcoming videos. See you in the next one, bye.